And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send me to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. From the Bible, God records to us, God being Jesus, I have a lead, red letter vi version of the Bible here, Jesus' words in red. What I just read to you is God speaking. And God speaking to us proclaims that there is no Hades. God proclaims to us there is a place called hell. And if you don't believe in hell, Jesus Christ believes in hell. Jesus Christ is the creator of hell for Satan and his angels. And I am preaching a message that is dead in the churches today, that is hated. I am preaching about H-E-L-L. -L. And where the Bible speaks about without the Lord Jesus Christ, when you die without him, you will be placed into hell just like the rich man. And we're going to look at Luke 16 today. We're going to look about a man in hell. You may want roses. You may want pansies. You may want a buttery message. But we're going to preach about your destination without the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to preach on something that Jesus preached about. And this is a message that Jesus preached. So we're going to take the words of Jesus and we're going to speak what Jesus spoke about a place that he created, about a place that he went to Calvary that you may not go to hell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish. A man without Jesus Christ will perish into hell. Let's look at hell. Because I assume that some of you people are going to be in church tomorrow morning and you have not ever heard your preacher, your preacher, your priest, or anybody speak about hell. You probably hear more about hell in the workplace of going to hell and we stand here preaching that you may not go to hell. And count how many times I say the word hell versus the word heaven. And yet, Jesus Christ preached more about hell than he did about heaven. The first thing we realize, when a man dies, verse 22, and he dies without Christ, in hell he lifted up his eyes. When you're saved, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord, when you die without Jesus, you are absent from the body and present in hell instantly. Once you take that final breath, I'm not talking about CPR, I'm not talking about bringing you back to life. Once you face death and death is permanent in your life, you will wake up in a place called hell because you have not trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And it said your eyes were open. 
When you enter into eternity, heaven or hell, you still got your eyeballs. You still can see. Well, I believe man's soul sleeps. I believe there's no eternity. And you stand a liar by God. Because God has told you that there is a hell. God has told you you have that eternal spirit. You have that eternal soul. And that eternal soul has eyeballs. The first thing we learn about in our study of hell today. Well, preacher, you keep going to hell this and hell that. A lot better than someone telling you to go to hell and having someone tell you not to go to hell and how not to go to hell. And don't give me all your little children uh, they shouldn't hear stuff like that. Your children have heard stuff on the television, on the radio that they should never have heard of. They ought to get a little hell preaching at them. They ain't getting it from the parents and they ain't getting it from the church. Last couple of weeks I had preached good little fairy tale uh, messages that to be love. God is love and love is God. We preach about the Now we're going back into the meaty bones and the meaty flavor of what the Bible has to say. And the Bible has to say two things. There's a hell, and in hell you have your eyeballs. And it also torments. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Ladies and gentlemen, hell has no guardian. Jesus tells us in hell that there are torments. No Budweiser. No cigarettes. Alcohol and fire consumes, burns up. Cigarettes. When you light a fire to your cigarette, it consumes. You can't have that stuff in a fire. It's gone. So forget about drinking and partying and smoking in, in hell. The flames of hell ruins your pleasure. The party in hell has been canceled due to the fire. The fire, the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, is the wrath of God abiding upon you because you have not chosen His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your Savior. You cannot have any pleasure in the afterlife in the absence of Jesus Christ. No matter how much you try to air condition in hell and the preachers air condition the place, listen, there's going to be so many preachers in hell, their feet are going to be standing out the windows and the doors of the place trying to get them all in. Just because a guy stands behind a pulpit doesn't mean he's going to heaven. And the Bible warns you about that also. The Bible warns you that Satan has his ministers. Satan wants a follower. Satan ain't going to preach to you about this message about his domain. And this will be the domain of Satan for all eternity. So we learn by Jesus... There is a hell. People go to hell. They have eyeballs in hell. Dry eyes. Red eyes. And no eye drops. You ever have dry eyes? Well, you're not going to have water. You're not going to have eye drops. You're just going to have red, dry eyes for all eternity. Now, you may have a pharmacist in hell. He ain't going to be able to take care of you. You may have physicians in hell. They're not going to be able to take care of you. Because they're going to be under the same condemnation and some same damnation and the same pain and torment that you will have. A torment is suffering without any relief. There is no relief, no matter how you spell it, there is no relief in hell. Absolutely not. And we'll see that as we go on. But we also read, being in torment, seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So with them eyeballs in hell, you will see, and you will recognize people. How's that? How would you like to be in a place of torment for all eternity and you can see the priest and the pope that puts you there for all eternity? You can see that preacher, that preacherette. You can see that priest for all eternity burning in torment with you. Hate your boss? 
seen them. This rich man, without a name, recognizes Abraham and recognizes Lazarus in his eyeballs, in hell, being tormented. By the way, we know about Lazarus. We know about the rich man. We are told about circumstances in their life, yet the rich man has no name in hell. He has no name recorded in the scriptures. And yet, when I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in April 1987, my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which will be checked as about my soul, about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ being applied to the sins of my life, that I may be washed. My name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Bible says when I get to heaven one day, I will be given a new name. Yet, in hell, you have no name. The Bible does not record this man's name in hell. You are nameless before the Almighty, the All-Holy God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Imagine being in a place in hell where you recognize the figures and the spokesmen and the foundations of your religion and you stand and look at Buddha as he and you burn forever. And knowing that fat idiot had no way, no truth, and no life and brought you into the place of Satan. And that's just one Bible verse we've looked at. Look at all the information that Jesus Christ has told us in one verse. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. When a man, when your soul enters into hell, you're not going to want a joint. You're not going to want alcohol. You're not going to want love. You're going to want mercy. You will seek, from the day you enter into those gates, you will want the mercy of God that can be applied today before you go to hell, and you will never get that mercy that you seek. There is no mercy in hell. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said he wanted mercy and he never, ever received it. Let me tell you about the, the God, the religion, the atheistic view of the man that you are following called Satan. Satan has no mercy. Satan has no grace. And Satan has no love. And that will be the place of his abode, of his abiding, where you will dwell with Satan for eternity without Jesus. You will have no love, no mercy, and no grace. Yet, for the born-again Bible-believing Christian, we record in the Bible that God said, He'll wipe away your tears. Abundant mercy is available. Grace is an attitude of God. And the Bible says as far as love, God is love. So as the Bible says God is love and you enter into a place where He is never to be found because God will never be found in hell. When you enter a place forsaken by God, you can't have the attitude of God when He's not there. He also says, that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. You can receive all the great things. In America, you can receive all the greatest of the great things. Cash, check, plastic, whatever you can get in America, it is so great. It is so wonderful, this country called America. You can have all you want and go for more. And we also read, 
And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. And in life, there are people who get mistreated, who get abused. That's recorded in the Bible. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution yet for one day. One day in eternity where there will be no time, I will be forever comforted by the comforter that has come to me by the, by the gospel that Jesus Christ died for my sin, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures that he gave us a comforter. I will be comforted forever being in the presence and the home of the abode of God, New Jerusalem. God will comfort those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have troubles here. You may be problems here. You may be poor here. You may be eating table scraps here. Your, your best friend may only be a dog here. But yet, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be a time when you will be comforted for all eternity by the God that created you, by the God that loved you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And we continue. And thou art tormented. We read about torments. Now we come tormented. Hell is full of torment. Yes, plural. And yet, in hell, torments are past. Torments are present. And torments are future in hell. You cannot get no relief by rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. While those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ they will be comforted. And yet those that choose to go their own way, to go the way of Satan, you will be tormented according to Jesus Christ, His words recorded in the Gospel of Luke of the King James 1611 Bible. I am not quoting to you my words. I am not quoting to you the words of men. I am recording the words of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. You got an argument, you take it with God. And God will win. And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great golf fix. So that which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. You know the remarkable thing I have recorded in my Bible? I have recorded, maybe some of you here listening to this loudmouth preacher, you've heard the story of Jesus walking on the water. And he did. There was no ice caps. There was no illusions. Jesus walked on the water. And let me tell you what happened about 2,000 years ago. Jesus was nailed to the cross on Calvary's hill. There upon the cross he said, it is finished. As he gave up the ghost and died. And when Jesus died, he went into hell. I said, Jesus went into hell. And deposit yours and my sins in hell. And then when he was in hell, he grabbed the keys of death in hell upon the key hook and said, Thank you very much, devils. I'm out of here. And Jesus walked on another place of water, the Bible records. He walked upon this gulf. This gulf that separated Abraham's bosom from hell. He walked upon that gulf like he walked upon that sea. And he came over to Abraham's bosom. And he said, no, 
wasted. Having a soul with li with eyeballs, being able to speak, to know people around you. And when they look off at Abraham's bosom today, they see no one because Jesus has set them free. The only ones in hell today are those that have rejected Christ as they look off a place, a refuge, now gone and empty by Jesus Christ. Do you know what a man in hell believes today? He believes that Jesus will set you free when he sees Abraham's bosom free and empty. But it's too late. You must learn that Jesus will set you free before it's too late for you. Before you get into that place and you see Abraham's bosom off and say, yeah, that's what that loud mouth idiot spoke about on October, on a Saturday morning, when he ruined my business of people buying my watermelons, and he preached and made us all angry, and he was right. Let me try that preacher, that Bible out. Hey, God, I want mercy. You ain't getting it. He's right. Why didn't I call upon Jesus then? The invitation's now. The invitation's there for you to meet God now. Listen, I couldn't scare you out of hell. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit must draw you. And yet the Holy Spirit who written this Bible has told us many of you will not believe. The Bible says that you're going to mock. You're not going to listen. And yet you make the Bible more real to me by your reactions because your reactions are in the Bible. I'd like to have a little more women at the well. I'd like to have a little more Ethiopian eunuchs. But well, those are far and few. Let's read on. Then he said, I pray thee therefore. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A man in hell is praying? How many of you atheists today pray to God? And here, this man, he says, I pray thee therefore, Father. Here's a God praying to a Father, and he's not getting his answers. He is not going to be saved. 